Okay, you know what? There's a story that's in the news that I feel like it doesn't necessarily need to be covered so much, the story, because it's being covered en masse, and I really don't think the story deserves that much uh, media attention, but I think it needs to be covered on a different note. Something that I've seen a couple of analysts actually touch on, but I don't think it's really getting the type of play that it needs to get when you're talking to other investors. When I'm saying to you like, hey, okay, so you're sitting down with your portfolio trying to figure things out for your retirement with that hard-earned money that you worked all week for, that you and your wife or you and your husband have been breaking your backs for trying to make sure that you can make it through and pay pay for your kids stuff and, and cover the mortgage and still plan for your future and do all that. You know, like we see a lot of this media coverage touch on certain topics that are fun. You know, they, they look really flashy. You can relate to them because they're there right in front of your face. But these are not investments that uh, a really good analyst is going to go or a really good advisor is going to go out and tell you that this is what you should do. So I've seen a couple of analysts touch on it, but I think the mainstream media gets run away with the actual hype of the media, the story, the pizzazz, you know, the glitz, the glamour, the what it is, not the what it actually comes down to. I'm Cody from Wall Street Breakdown. Today we've seen an earnings call from Snap. So Snapchat is what it is. It's very similar to Instagram. You're showing people some stuff on your phone. Okay, look, I get it. You can relate, right? You probably have it on your phone or you know somebody that has it on their phone. You have it on your mobile device. You have it on your tablet, something like that, right? You probably have an account. Somebody has an account. This is very in, in the same vein as uh, Twitter, as any of these uh, video game companies that make app, app stuff, you know, like very, this is fleeting, very, very fleeting. Snap went out, missed on revs, missed on earnings. Earnings were ridiculous, right? All negatives. People know that, right? It's a losing company already, but missed on, you know, like daily active users that people were expecting. They missed on the amount of money they make per daily active user. They missed on all of it. It's all misses. And it's because this stuff is all fleeting. It's not something that is sustainable. Marketplaces like this change too quickly. Uh, we talked about this the other day. Might have been on, a, on the podcast. We might actually got into this about Facebook and how trepidatious I was even when Facebook came to the IPO stage. Even though Facebook had been around a long time, in my mind, I still related it back to MySpace. I couldn't see how they were going to be able to grow on such an exponential level and retain all the actual client base, build on it, monetize, do all of this stuff while staving off the technological boom that's going on constantly. It's a consistent revolving door of new ideas, new implementation and new companies coming to market with new things that get your attention. Oh, I'm over here now, right? Like that stuff is going to happen. So I couldn't understand how Facebook was going to do it. Facebook hunkered down and really proved me wrong. Okay, so I, I will be the first to admit that. But when we look at a lot of these other companies, very, very fleeting, something, can you see them being around in 15 years? Can you see them being a part of the lexicon of the world 15 years from now? Are they going to be having sustainable revenue growth and user-based sustainability? Is that going to be happening 15 years from now? Or are you speculating on something that you hope is going to grow, but not uh, you're not doing it based on any type of of your due diligence, right? That's my concern, is that you're not actually going to be able to do that and have a portfolio that works in its best possible form. We're not going to be able to go out and hope on hope because we understand Snapchat. We don't understand, you know, uh, we don't understand Transocean. We don't understand BHP Billiton. We don't, those companies are far too complex. So we understand this, so we get drawn into that. And that, that happens a lot to me. I find I get into a lot of conversation about the things that find their way into the media, not things that are actually doing really well. Because the fact is, is the mainstream media, they don't just cover Boeing and Caterpillar that often anymore. I don't know why. They're the stalwarts of your economy. These are companies that are doing unbelievable things and driving the economy on a global scale to new heights all the time. But these companies are kind of boring unless they're in some sort of controversy unless Boeing's got something you know a, if that's going to take place all of a sudden we've got ourselves a conversation but if it, Boeing's just selling more Dreamliners and there's more purchases and they're making more con contracts with the federal government and everything's going well sure it covers a little bit of topic on the financial news but Snapchat gets coverage on the mainstream media news so do things like Bitcoin and those things deter you over here from what the actual point is the point is that you go out and find companies that maybe are boring, 
Maybe they don't do all the stuff that's fancy. Maybe you're not going to be able to sit down at any dinner table on a Sunday in North America and find yourself in a conversation with somebody else about one of these companies, Procter & Gamble, Bristol Myers Squibb, Kimberly Clark. These companies aren't as interesting. I understand that as what Snapchat might be, what a Twitter might be. But these companies are fleeting as far as where their growth potential is going to go. Unless like an actual acquisition takes place on Instagram and they get picked up by a Facebook. And I'm sure a lot of these companies are trying to build to that. But you've got companies like Twitter that are steadfast about becoming their own com company. They're really doing it on their own. They don't want to be acquired. And we see the regression is taking place. It's a lot more than people actually participating. It's filled with trolls and nonsense, and it's not near what the idea was to begin with. You don't have the really strong restraints that you do with a company like Facebook, who obviously is one of the few companies I was wrong about, who got it 100% right. And I can see them being here 15 years from now, regardless of the technological shifts. I'm sure a lot of people feel the same way. Do you feel the same way about Snapchat? I don't think you necessarily do. So when I see the media coverage on, let's say, CNBC for, for uh, just, just for a, a point of reference, let's just say that, right? Well, CNBC is where I go. There was a lot of it. Like the first like 10 articles, there was like six articles about Snapchat in some vein or another. You know, biggest gainers, losers of the day, this, that, the other thing, a couple of op-ed pieces, but come on. Come on, you know other things happen in the marketplace today, right? You know you're steering people kind of in the wrong direction. You, in and of itself, are part of the problem because you are drawing attention to what is a loser. It's a loser. Please don't go out and put that stuff in your portfolio. Talk to your licensed professional financial advisor. Don't take advice from a guy wearing glasses on YouTube, but please do go out and take as much professional advice that you can and do your due diligence. You're the smart one here. You know what's good for you. You're intelligent. That's why you're here researching this stuff with me. We're not going to get roped into a bunch of stuff that's fun today, but passe tomorrow. That's not an investment I'm looking to make. I'm looking to make an investment that's going to grow over time, pay dividends, and make me feel about as secure as I can feel, save for like financial meltdown. You know what I'm saying? I'm Cody from Wall Street Breakdown. If you haven't already, click the subscribe button, click the notification bell, thumbs up for this video, all videos, thumbs up for making really good investment choices. If you haven't already, in the comments section, over somewhere, I don't know where it is. I always have this camera flipped around. I think it's over here. If this is the comment section, I would love to hear from you. If this is the comment section, I don't want you to say a thing, but if this is the comment section, hearing from you is prudent. We love hearing from you. Have a good day.